Hey, so if you are a health and wellness practitioner and you have a website, you probably have a blog. And if you have a blog, you probably either use it amazingly and strategically, or you might need a little bit of help on how to use this blog to the maximum amount so it actually boosts your audience, their how, they, how much they know you, how much they like you, how much they trust you, whether they get on your email list and whether they eventually become paying clients because through your blog strategy, you show them your expertise and how you can help them with their problems. But that doesn't happen from haphazardly um, posting random things on your blog or vlog or podcast whenever you feel like it. If you do it strategically, you will actually be able to build momentum, build this know, like, and trust factor, and eventually get more clients and more customers to buy from you because of your awesome blog, vlog, and podcast. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So my name is Lisa Cleach. I am a content and credibility specialist, and I am here to show you not that blogging is important but how to strategically plan it so that you can use it to the maximum amount. And we are literally going to plan a month's worth of blog posts for you in 20 minutes. So let me share my screen. And the first thing to know when you are um, planning it is I have a free content strategy calendar. And that is on my website. I'm putting the link below. Um, you can probably see it here now. And that is going to be, um, it doesn't even need an email opt-in. Like literally you can just download it and, and, and keep it and use it for whatever you want. And you don't even need to give me your email address. So I'll show you how to get yourself a copy of it. So I'm going to put the link down and to get yourself a copy, if you have Google drive, you'd go file, make a copy. You could change the name if you like, you could change the folder if you like, and then you hit okay. I'm not going to hit okay because I already have this. And then it will go to your Google Drive. If you don't have Google Drive, no problem. You can literally save it as an Excel. So if you go File, Download As, you have a bunch of options here, Microsoft Excel. And then you have your little um, save box window. And then you can save it. And then it's yours. So now that you have it, um, the tabs are welcome, where it has a bunch of instructions that I'm going to go through today. Your actual strategy, which is going to be exciting that we are going to do and we're going to create for you in less than 20 minutes, as well as ideas and brainstorming tab, where you can put down just list ideas that you have, um, questions that you've been asked or great articles that you've read that you know you could do 10 times better on or that you have a completely different opinion on. All of these topic ideas you can throw here. And by the way, I have a topic idea here, which has um, a blog post that I wrote. It has over 60 ideas, not headlines, but literally ideas on what you can talk about on your blog. So now let's dive in. So you can see it looks, there's a lot of rows, there's a lot of columns, but right now we're gonna start off, we're gonna stick with the green ones. And as you can see, it's assuming four per month, blog posts. So um, we're just going to assume weekly. Of course, if you do less or more, you will add in or subtract rows. So let's say, for example, we're going to dive right in. Let's say, for example, we blog on Tuesdays. Well, Tuesdays in January, there's five of them. So we just go in, we insert a row, and then we'll just throw in the dates that we want to publish. So it's the 2nd of January, the 9th of January, 16th, 23rd, and then of course, the 30th. Done. So the next question is going to be, we're gonna jump, we're sticking with the green to begin with, to the topic ideas. Now this is not headlines. These are headlines. These are just topic ideas. You're gonna refine your keyword, your headline title, your slug, all of that is refined after you create your content. Right now, we're just throwing in topics. So the most important things to, to put in first are the important dates, obviously. Now, January, we all know, is huge in the health and wellness industry. Everybody's having resolutions, and they're going to have to start their gym memberships and clean eating, and this is the boom. So we have to plan some launch 
for January. So let's say you want to build up a little bit of an audience before then you're going to launch on the third week of January. Let's say you have a 30 day program, a 30 day um, start 2018 with better nutrition program. Of course, you're going to have a much nicer name. So let's say you're launching on this week. You could literally do a blog post that week that is nothing but a promotion on all the benefits or an interview with one of your happy um, clients who've gone through this program or some kind of content related directly to this that week. In fact, you're going to do that for a few weeks leading up to it, which you'll see. So your call to action, which is always the important thing to think about for every blog topic, is going to be you want people to buy program, right? You want people to buy your program, and that is going to be your main call to action for that week. And again, this is going to be a sticky date. So you can see some dates are sticky and some are fluid. So for the sticky dates, I like to put them in yellow because we are definitely launching this on this day. It's not a, a topic that you could bump to another week. This is launching on this week. We're definitely doing this. We're promising it's sticky. That's, the, it, it, that's in yellow. So the next thing we want to put in, of course, are other important days. Do you have any other important days in January? Say the last week of January is your birthday. And you do an annual sale on your birthday of some products or programs. Let's say you have a smoothie guide that you want to put on sale as a promotion for your birthday. Again, your birthday is going to be sticky. It's not changing. So we're going to make that yellow. You have your smoothie guide. And your call to action, you can have a whole blog post if you want about smoothies or awesome smoothies, your favorite smoothies or, or whatever um, to promote the smoothie guide. And your call to action would be for people to buy your discounted guide. Okay. And you can see the last item that we haven't done yet that's in green is your category. Now, if you have a lot of blog posts or you um, have already done some strategic planning for your blog, you may have categories. You may have a couple of different niches or sub niches. So here's an example of mine. I have a bunch of categories in my blog and uh, some of them are older, but the two that I focus on now as a content credibility specialist are your health content and health research. So I focus on how to find credible information to put in your health blog as a wellness professional. Right, I'm a content and credibility specialist. And then we have your content, which is how to write, how to plan, how to promote your blog, blog, or podcast. So if you have categories like this, we can throw them in. So for example, perhaps one of your categories is recipes, right? So you're going to have your smoothie guide is going to be part of your recipes category. For your better nutrition program, well, you're going to have one called nutrition. And that's going to talk about clearly nutrition. So now what we want to do is fill in the rest of the weeks with that are in green. And we're going to get to the white ones next. So if you put your strategic hat on, you, you think of it like a CEO. We want to warm up our audience to what we are going to be offering them. So we clearly want something else in the same category that will lead and warm people up to a smoothie guide the week before. So we can have, for example, um, benefits of green smoothies. Benefits of green smoothies, right? So what your call to action here is not to buy the guide because it's not on sale yet. Your call to action here, what you are, what the action that you are calling your audience to do is, for example, you let's say you have a free opt-in where people exchange their email address for your um, five favorite smoothie breakfast smoothies. And so what you want to do is you want them to opt into smoothies and then you know people are interested in smoothies or new people who come to your website and find you that week would be interested in smoothies. Well, this is great because guess what's happening the week after? You're gonna be selling in the smoothie guide. So you see how this is strategic planning. 
So again, let's work backwards from your big launch, your 30-day program launch, and you want people to buy your program. Well, what would you do the few weeks beforehand? Well, you would, again, want something in the same category. And you could do, for example, um, you have, it's January, if you are anywhere near Canada, it's cold and people get cold, people get sick in January, they're done with the cold. And um, this would be a great topic on what if we talk about nutrition to boost nutrition when you're ill, feeling ill. Right? Of course, this isn't your headline. You're going to come up with an amazing headline when you write it. You're going to do your keyword research when you write it. Right now, we're literally just looking at topics. So your call to action here could, of course, be an opt-in, just like with the smoothies, something free that you want people to download. And it could be something to do with nutrition. You could also have them opt-in to a wait list for your new program. You can have literally a wait list for your new program and people who find your blog on this week would opt in to wait list for the program you're launching the next week. So you already are warming people up and they're already putting up their hands saying, yes, I'm interested in your program. So to round out the rest of January, what would you do the second day of January? Well, you would want to talk about the holidays or resolutions or something that directly relates to um, the time of year, as well as your new product launch. So let's say you have something about unhealthy holidays. Um, here are um, my most nutrient dense recommendations or something along those lines, right? So here you have it. You literally know what you're going to be writing about or creating a blog or, or vlogs about for the next five weeks. But let's take this one step further. Let's say you really want this launch to be successful. Your 30 day, your start 2018 with better nutrition program. Well, a good way to get more success with this, oh dear, I'm sorry, I forgot the call to action. So your call to action here would also be your wait list. Sorry, so back to um, the nutrition when you're feeling ill, or, or back to the, um, lead up to your 30-day program, well, you might want to guest post on other platforms for people to get to know you. So you could insert a row. Let's say you have something else coming out the first or second week of January because you want to give it time. In this category, I would write down as guest because you are going to be a guest on somebody else's blog, for example. And let's say your topic would be something about why start a new year with better nutrition, right? Nutrition. And here, your call to action is not going to be your wait list because these people don't know you. You are a guest on somebody else's platform. So in order for them to get to know you, you would probably offer them some kind of opt-in where they would, they, the link back to your site would be a landing page or, or another blog post where you want them to opt into something about nutrition. So they would get on your email list. And you see this gives you a couple of weeks to start nurturing your relationship with them because you'll talk about nutrition here. And in this post, you'll ask people to get on your wait list. Then you're gonna launch your program here. You'll talk all about your program. And you want people to buy your program. So do you see how we're being strategic and how this is going to build your audience, build your no like and trust factor and have people um, see that you are the professional to help them through um, whatever health goals they have. So let's just fill in the rest of the, the white. So if it's your blog, your due date could literally be the day before and you just want to sleep on it to edit. That's what I do. You would be the author. It would be on your blog. Um, this would be your audience. And again, we're doing the orange last. So here, references. So depending on the type of post, you can see I have here for references. You could have um, reference other blogs or websites. You could reference PubMed. For example, if I'm writing about um, health 
research, I would reference the research. If I'm writing about health content, I would reference some content marketing websites. And then um, an expiry date would be rare, but it would be only if you have something that has no applicability past a, a certain date. So for example, most of your blog is going to be evergreen content. It's going to be content you're going to want to stay on there. It's not going to expire. It's going to be just as relevant three years from now than it is tomorrow. But let's say this blog post isn't really a cornerstone content with evergreen content for you. Let's say this is literally just like a sales page for your program and you're putting this on your blog. Well, in this case, you might actually want this post to, you might either want to rework the post after a certain date, after you've done your launch, or you may want to put it into draft, um, draft form so that you can use it again when you launch it again. Um, it's up to you if you ever want to uh, expire a, a certain post. It's just a place to, to make a note of it there. If you have any notes or ideas, of course. And then your status would be, is it drafted, is it published, is it on hold, etc. So anything after this is going to be on monitoring the success of your content and is out of scope of this particular video, but I will be talking about how to monitor success of your content in an upcoming blog post or video. So look, it's done. We just need to put in your due dates. So this is a guest post. So for example, let's say you're guesting for um, Mind Body Green, right? And it's going to be a blog post, but they're not gonna they're not gonna accept a post on January 1st for January 2nd. They may very well ask for it 16th of December. Right? And then your opt-in is nutrition. You can talk about your references, your expiry dates, any notes, and your status here. So if you go through and you put down the rest of your um, information here you've you've literally planned everything out for yourself and you can see how by doing this either a month in advance or three months in advance you can help build people with your consistency with your expertise and um, just by helping help by helping people with your awesome free content that they know they can rely on every week or every other week or twice a week or whatever. So that is it. That is literally how, I will un unshare my screen now. How do I do that? Stop share, here we go. So that's how you plan literally a month's worth of content for your business in 20 minutes. And you can do this once a month, or you can even, you could even plan out three months in advance. And I hope this has helped you because really, your blog is an awesome opportunity for you to um, show people that you're awesome, that you know what you're talking about, that you're consistent, that people can trust you, and that they can eventually buy from you. So I hope this is helpful. So here is cheers. Here's my coffee from Grouse Mountain in uh, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, cheers to having better content strategy that will boost your blog and boost your biz. All right. Thanks very much.